Hey, you clicked on K-Rock's interview with Boy Genius, and here they are. Lucy, Phoebe, Julian, welcome to K-Rock. Hello. Good morning as we tape this. Good morning to you. And a congratulations. Number one, not strong enough. I just read in the uh, good old billboard on the adult uh, alternative chart. We're adults and we're alternative. You you guys seem (laughs) stoked. We are stoked. We are stoked. Yeah. It's like unbelievable. The shape of it is unreal to me to be like... my band has a number one song on the alternative charts. Yeah. Well, it is kind of cool because you guys have so many, you know, proverbial feathers in the cap, right? To use a, a phrase, but that, that's got to kind of be cool, right? To have a number one on a chart as as boy genius. Yeah, it's a first for all of us, right? Wow, yeah. right on. Now, um, we're gonna get to how great you guys are in the record and et cetera, and especially not strong enough. But can I like just kind of get down to brass tacks of what I'm most fascinated by? About Boy Genius? Yes, sure. Okay, and that's Lucy's Google Drive folder <laughs> of pictures of your shadow, which I, I take think it back. You cannot talk about th- this. <laughs> this is I don't even think it's we- it's a little weird, but I don't even think it's that weird. I this is my favorite like little anecdote I've ever heard in an interview with like any band ever. Can you kind of take us behind the scenes? <laughs> What do you want to know? <laughs> about the inspiration? Like, uh, why you're taking pictures of your shadow in the first place? I, like, compulsively categorize things. There's more in that Google Drive than you'll ever know. <laughs> well, you said it's, like, your but Pinterest, right? I think, yeah, I'll, like, notice patterns in the... I'm about to sound so stupid. But, it. like, in the world, like, just there's these, like, repeated images and, like, some really hit home for me and so i'll just like take images and i'm like what am i gonna do with this put it in a folder i guess and yeah. then i'll occasionally i'll just like collect basically like i have these just like collections and that's one of the things i collect i love <laughs> it that pattern recognition that you talk about lucy do you ever see that um be like an attribution to songwriting at all like in terms of like identifying tropes or, or themes or do you ever see that carry over into your art that is such a good question. That's probably true. I, I think that is true. Like, I think the same guy who takes pictures of one's shadow is also doing the songwriting style that you love. I do have, like, uh, a collection of words, too. Like, that is, I have, every year I have a new note on my phone called Various Bits, and I'll write, like, a line here and there, and um, it just grows and grows and grows. And then a new one starts every year. But I'll go back to like 2019 various bits and like scroll, stop, be like, what can I do with that? Like there's stuff from our record that I just kind of like randomly was scrolling. Always an Angel, Never a God is something I wrote a long time ago that was just in a note that I just collected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Made its way onto the, the, the single. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Phoebe, I. I Correct me if I'm paraphrasing this wrong, but you were talking about your creative process uh, with Boy Genius specifically and how maybe like you kind of not blew through, but like you got maybe 90 percent of the work done pretty quickly. And then you take a much longer on that final, you know, seven to 10 percent. Um, is that something that even with your solo stuff, you would say that's just your typical creative process or is that unique to working in Boy Genius? I think that's pretty typical for me. Like I'll get a template of a song and then I just spend the rest of the time trying to perfect it or like something about it is bugging me and I I just know when it's done but it's really helpful having these guys around me because I don't, do you ever need like an email friend like you need to be in a, which I, I feel like that's why so many people answer emails in coffee shops just like you need to be accountable to the space mm-hmm. um, so if I'm left to my own devices that process like the last 10% of something can take me like two years and with these guys they're just like just choose to finish it you know right now yeah I I'm going to sneeze. Am I? Do Who's it. Say? Do it. Also, I'm this guy, right? I think I'm this. I think I have to yeah, be this guy right now. I'm not going to sneeze anymore. The sunglasses, the sunglasses fixed sunglasses it. The sunglasses make you immune. <laughs> you were like, wait, wait, wait. I'm in danger of not looking cool. Let me put you on the sunglasses. Discovered, like a sneeze fix. The little kid thing of like, if you want to make yourself sneeze, you like snare, stare Looking at the sun. The sun. Yeah. yeah. Do we all Is have that a shades? little kid thing? I don't. I see adults I, doing that. I don't have shades. I can't hold on to a single object smaller than my hand for more than a week. I, I know, I'm like Julian's sunglasses rich in my car right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, leave things around. I wanted to talk to you guys about something um, that, you know, I don't know if, uh, if this is just me, what I gather from you guys, but I think Boy Genius, you know, as like a construct and as a, like a, as a project is sort of an interesting examination of the idea of competition. Because if you think about the name and you think about sort of like the, the origins of it, right, it's, 
women obviously in, in music they don't have to be inherently in competition with themselves but yet like obviously the music industry and just the world does that right and you guys are sort of defying that construct but then f competition can also be a beautiful thing because in your creative process right you guys are constantly pushing each other to beat that and beat that and you can be better do you guys ever think about that sort of the duality of that that idea i i was thinking about this yesterday i'm like so competitive with y'all same what? when i <laughs> like it's I'm weird so competitive well yeah like in recording i have only harnessed my competition with people for good phoebe hates games but loves competition that How's is that true work? yeah uh i think games kill the vibe the vibe being literally any vibe <laughs> <laughs> like if someone's like we're doing a game like do they kill bad vibes too or just the good ones uh, I, I think, think a, a bad would... vibe cannot be fixed by a game. <laughs> that's so but a true. game. You know can't what I mean? Make that's actually the worst. worst. Yeah, yeah, that's worse. But we to be fair to me, <laughs> I like being around people playing games who enjoy games. Did you say to be fair to me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like to be fair to me, I'm not like a bully <laughs> of the of the group. Me. I just actually, personally I'm don't. Being fair to you. I am. <laughs> Growth. Growth. <laughs> Growth. Gross, but with a lisp. <laughs> Growth. Uh, <laughs> like, if, if there was, like, if I woke up on the bus and there was a risk being played by not me, that would make me happy. Wait, it's because you get to be an observer, so you get to, you, I get to you like, don't have to have the stake in it, so you can experience it for, like, the fun of the story. Also, my hatred the... of games is the part of me that would, like, hit a little kid in the face to, like, throw up. <laughs> yeah, did you see me you in that I mean? video? Like, I had to beat those games. kids in the race. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I had to win that race. Exactly. Um, you think it's a rules thing? Like you don't like the rules of the, like of games? Ooh. Because in your regular life, the competition, you kind of get to determine, you get to critically think, you get to solve the problem, you get to figure out like how you're going to use the tools familiar to you and in a game you're given you're given chance and then rules and constructs. I think I like rules and constructs really? for the most part, but Something about games. I don't know. That was a U-turn. That was like a. I thought. I thought Julian yeah, nailed it. I well, I like like the rules and constructs of music theory. Right. And like, I do. This is a girly that failed music theory twice. That's why I like it. School? This is what I was saying. No, see, I feel. I feel. I feel <laughs> failing music theory because I leaned so hard into music theory because I didn't get it and I needed a. I needed a framework because. But now I kind of sometimes I'm like my compulsion to learn more about the thing I'm passionate about and understand the like rules and constructs. It's like you learn them so that you can operate fluidly outside of them too. Exactly. And, and like a pass or fail situation yeah. sucks for competition for me. Exactly. And I think, and I think I get triggered by games in the way that I was horrible at school, you know, yeah. like I love learning stuff, but on my terms only, <laughs> you know, I find it hateful in, in, in an environment where I must, I must succeed. Well, so since Phoebe now has told us she loves rules, you guys are uh, some of the best songwriters in the world at this given moment. Do you guys have any rules, quote unquote, when it comes to songwriting? I have so many and uh, I break them often. Me too. Uh, or I have like general things. I'm like, I can't do that. And then it's like enticing. It's like, I can't, I can't say that. And then you do, and it's probably the best line. Yeah, like rhyming something with itself. Yeah. Like using the same word as the rhyme. I hate when people do it out of laziness, but when mm -hmm. people do it to kind of like underline that what they're trying to say is important. Yeah. I really don't want to be redundant, but y'all have kind of reframed that for me as something. It's a theme. It's a motif. It's a motif. Yeah. Um I feel yeah, like there are certain things that we've done so much that we just can't ever, like, we can't ever drown again. We, we can't, can't ever, drown. We can't go to the hospital. We can't go to the hospital. We or can't. a cemetery or graveyard. I, I can't be dreaming. These things, but I can't, <laughs> I can't just by proximity dreaming. to y'all. Yeah, totally. You're I can't write dreams. about a cemetery or yeah. ghost. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are big readers, I understand. 
And uh, you actually did a really cool thing, I believe, with Apple Books, where you uh, were kind of listing what you were reading during the creation of the record. Mm -hmm. um, is that something where, you know, I think in, invariably, like whatever you're consuming, right, is just inherently going to come out of you when you're making any sort of art. Were there certain books that you read that you can actually point to like points on the record that you can go, oh, you know, what? I was reading this story and I was on this journey and then that spilled over into these lyrics? There's a Joan Didion quote in Anti-Curse. Mm -hmm. um, From the White Album. Was anyone ever so young? And also, I feel like it was cool that you were reading Letter to a Young Poet because then I re went and revisited it. And then I was also reading Myth of Sisyphus. Please no one crucify me for that. <laughs> being Not beating the all? being me allegation. <laughs> <laughs> You can only be yourself. <laughs> I can. Um, yeah. I feel like there's some myth of Sisyphus on this record. Yeah. A little Camus. A little bit of that. There's the word. No. Existential is on this record. Yeah. But it was uh, it was about like examining writing and examining the cr examining the creative process. Like. It, I'm not gonna say meta, but it was like. Being in a creative process and then re reading something like. Um, the artist's way or whatever the you know like right. challenging yourself to be in the practice be in the practice every day yeah. i was reading some really horny leonard cohen poetry <laughs> let's please acknowledge that i didn't lie <laughs> 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 that man <laughs> sustained horniness his whole life he did it's a feat it's admirable Chelsea Hotel is a pretty horny song when you think about it yeah of course oh wait so this horny. is a good horny do you grief. think he thinks of her that often is he lying or serious? Oh yeah, Have we I think he's Jesus? serious. I think really? you, you think he's serious. I think he thinks of her all the time. We had this fight in Austin. We, I think he he's serious. I think it's, I think it's like ships in the night. Lives like they would never have ended up together, and that's what I think is sweet about the song. Yeah, but the last line of like. I don't even think of you. He's that often. written an entire I think song he sat of down. a memory he's ruminating on. But maybe he wrote it at the Chelsea Hotel. Because don't you I'm have like you. you don't have memories like that where I like if you're in a particular city as a dissociative person, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like sitting down and then committing yourself to thinking about something that you don't normally think about that maybe you should have processed more. Mm. I think that's an angle for sure. Person of dissociative experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what agree. I mean? Like the floodgates. <laughs> You don't think about it that much, and then you just open the floodgates one day, and it's. But and it's making that song. something, yeah, it's just Leonard like you close the loop on it, and it's just like it's yeah. like a container for the whole memory. Like imagine writing such a perfect song, it's but just like oh, did it? It can float away. But you don't know when you write it that it's perfect because it's like rest from your experience. And also, we're talking about Leonard Cohen, whose entire persona is like dedicated, even if he was self mythologizing by reinforcing it, to like love as a lofty principle. So I'm like, no way there isn't a tinge of romanticism in this, which feels good. It's indulgent and it's good. Let me have this. You can have it. It's in the eye of the beholder. We can have. We can have. It. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know. Uh, K-Rock is playing the hell out of... We're going to break up over this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hell of a segue right now. K-Rock is playing the hell out of uh, Not Strong Enough at the moment. And uh, we're talking a lot about creative process in this chat. Now, I understand, like, that was an interesting song because, Lucy, you were maybe, like, that was the slowest burn for you. You might have had, like, the the most... Um, and it wasn't that you didn't like the song, I understand, right? It was just maybe you didn't know what you could add to it because it was already maybe so fleshed out. Yeah, I think I was trying to get like the full picture of what we were trying to say with it and it uh i think when we were first writing a lot of our early ideas were redundant which is like one of those things i tried not to do and also being in a band of three people where we're all writing uh sometimes we've almost written verses that say the exact same thing and then i'm like C we need to say something else mm -hmm. um and then we did we got to a place where I feel like the idea like develops over the course of the song and like deepens. Um, but yeah, now it's like, maybe, is it my favorite? It's really fun to play. So fun to my play. favorites live surprise me. Yeah, Satanist is really fun to play. Satanist, Satanist is, is so my live. favorite live. I thought I would be more stoked about the like drop in Anti-Curse, but it's a lower BPM. I want to rush everything. Same. I'm just like hype up there. like. Speaking of live show, you guys did Coachella this year, and I your billboard was my favorite billboard. 
which like if you know if you're watching this right now you don't know there's all these billboards promoting sets you know what was the uh we're talking a lot about creative process were there like other who came up with that idea it was like you know a mock lawyer ad um and did you guys like bat around other ideas that could have made the billboard yeah i think that the original idea was dentistry oh yeah. because of the the teeth tattoos that we have and then who and then i think we were like but what if that it was like better call difficult. Saul? Yeah. Like sleazy. Yeah. 1-800. But you, because you're losing your case. Well, the Accidentes guy in LA, you know, like call on the Jacob. back of. Com. Yeah. And call, call Jacob, like all inspiration. Yeah. At being from LA, it's just. That is like uniquely LA. The, like the, the just the Although I was just in Philly and y'all have some really the interesting Philly billboards ones. are. The, there was a huge billboard coming home from the airport that was advertising vajayshals, <laughs> <laughs> which it was up for a really long time. A lot of people learned what a vajayshal was, including me, from this billboard. So it really did its job. Billboards are not passe. They're <laughs> yeah, and then there's like the horny tool. lawyer one. Making a case. The horny lawyer? Oh, there's a lot I'm of... I'm going to out myself, and it says something like, I'll get you off. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's so... I was like in Philly, <laughs> like driving on the highway being, what's happening here? What's happening in this place? It's a lot. What I was going to uh, ask you guys about is we have a shared love of uh, Hardy. And you guys, so I didn't see you there that night at the Roxy, but apparently you guys were like the coolest people ever. You just came in and then just watched it and got the F out of there. Yeah, we had to get our 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 Hardy of the day. Our fix. Our fix of yeah. Hardy. What is it about sold out, though? Because I love Hardy. What is it about sold out for you? Uh, Inexplicable. The chords. Feeling your, mm. your blood. The it of it. <laughs> the it of it. The fact that it is. Well, and I heard you guys giving props to Radio Song, which I love. Cause that's love Radio Song, too. Brilliant. It's kind of the same template. The fact that where it's a bait and switch song is on that song um, is like, it's like a dog whistle for the Hot Topic kids. Because yeah. you know somebody listening to that from Top 40 Country is like, doesn't, you know what I mean? I also like when uh, songwriters address their fans, like, in a funny way, you know? Like... It's just self-aware in a way that isn't annoying. Like, I think a lot of people, when they're self-aware, get annoying. Yeah. But it's just funny. Well, and also just, like, the flex of, like, I mean, how many people would pay, like, top dollar for that hook, right? And yeah, it, and it's, and it's kind of, like, like, it's really, like, you know, when, like, uh, somebody is, like, they could just get the ball and the goal, but they do it pretty. It's, like, he could he could just wear the hat and be a Nashville songwriter, but he's like, let me show you how easy it is to put this on right now. The figurative and the literal cowboy yeah. hat. That's awesome. It's, yeah. And Phoebe, you, play, you played Hardy on, I guess, on your radio show? Yeah. And you play, uh, like, who are, is there anybody else you're really excited about that you play on your radio show right now? Oh, my gosh, so many people. Well, some Claude songs just came out that are amazing and that have been on repeat Crumbs. for me. Crumbs has been on repeat. Um... Who else? I mean, of course, Muna, Charlie Hickey, Sloppy Jane, okay. um, Barty Strange, who we get to play with, uh, Dijon, who we get to play with, Claire, who we get to play with. Uh, the radio show has been like a, an, uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Every, every month I'm like, damn, am I going to have new stuff to play? And I always do. Yeah. It's very fun. Uh, another band you sort of like inadvertently uh, champion, obviously Disturbed, right? <laughs> yeah. Now I have a like, great okay, cool. Phoebe <laughs> Disturbed conspiracy okay. theory. I think that you re-energized David so much just by like sort of introducing that song to a new generation <laughs> that Phoebe is responsible for David joining Tinder. He joined Tinder? Yeah, oh it's like a God. huge story. And wow. I'm, why is it a story? Well, not, why do I feel why is anything like a story? weird about it? I shouldn't feel weird about that. Go off. Go, go off Tinder. Get go. off Tinder, my friend. Right? Go off. Oh, oh, you're, so you're saying, saying you're saying Phoebe said go off. But, I, but my Tinder. impulse was don't do that. But I think it's a tight publicity stunt. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Wait, the implication, there are implications. What do you mean? Are you saying, like, uh, Phoebe introduces music to a younger crowd, and now this person. <laughs> no, is, no. That is what Jesus. you said. That's <laughs> yeah. not at all I what I'm like, saying. I, I'm, I'm saying, saying that. He, this isn't cool. <laughs> she, Phoebe reintroduced that to an entirely new generation and kind of got to serve back into sort of the ethos of pop culture. And then, like, okay. months later, David's like, so I'm enabling his best life. him to go on Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I think there's something there. I want to get out of this there. person's business. We're <laughs> None <laughs> of my business. Out of this. I say be Liv. careful, David. I say be careful out there. Be careful yeah. out there. As someone, yeah, I was on Tinder for 24 seconds. Like, oh, I thought you were about to say hours ago. I was like, same. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, the worst. Um, what do you guys got going on the rest of the summer? I know you got some European dates, I think, in August, right? Is that the next thing you're looking forward to? Yeah, we well, play. We're on tour this all of June. Yeah. And then you're and then very end of June, right? Or no, end of July is end what I meant. July. Um, got a Red August. Rocks on there. Got a we're playing with Carly Rae Jepsen, mm. playing with Broken, Broken social, social Scene. Scene. Broken Social Scene, crazy. That crazy is crazy. Me. That is awesome. They're like, they that was the first concert I saw that made me want to play music. Good old Toronto group. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah. Toronto. Boy genius, everybody. 